You're listening to the Trim Radio Network. We cut the bull and serve the truth. Sunshine State, broadcasting from Palm Beach County, it's the Fishing in Florida Show, Sundays from 8 to 10 a.m., and now, here's your host, Riscala. Good morning, good morning, it is the Fishing in Florida Show, and I am just now waking up, (laughs) running behind, it's one of those mornings, oh my goodness, but the one thing that I really enjoyed this morning so far, when I took the dog out, it was cool. It was actually cool this morning. What a change. What a change. So this morning I have Carolyn with me. Carolyn is with Atlas Tracks. If you want to protect what you love to the max, you got to talk to Carolyn at Atlas Tracks. Good morning, Miss Carolyn. Good morning, Riscala. How are we doing, my, gr- my friend? We are doing well. I was uh, really bummed out this week. There were two ladies' tournaments that were canceled because of uh, weather, and the seas are pretty rough out here today in the South Florida area. So... But the good news is that it's going to be rescheduled for next weekend, and uh, we'll get the girls out on the water again. Hot dog. That, of course, is we're talking about the Pink Ladies Fishing Team. Yes, my all my wonderful girlfriends that, um, of course, it's October, which is Breast Cancer Awareness Month, but all of the girls on the team are either survivors, including myself, or thrivers, as we put them, or have somehow touched their families. So we get out there and... Uh, we uh we shake our booty and we catch some fish, so we do pretty well. <laughs> I want to see some of those videos, but let's let's get on to something a little bit more about fishing. <laughs> that would be our tides, our tides today. Well, let's see the uh, the high the low tide has already happened. It happened at uh, midnight, a little after midnight. Uh, next high tide was over. That's already happened at six seventeen this morning. The next low tide is going to be at uh, noon, a little afternoon. And uh, the last high tide will be almost 7 o'clock, 647. That, of course, is our area. Your tides will probably be a little different, maybe plus or minus 15, 20 up to an hour, depending upon how far away you are. Uh, We have some people. I was shocked to find out we have people that listen to us in Australia. (laughs) It is the Internet. Of course, we're worldwide. But uh, we do focus on on Florida, and that's why we call it fishing in Florida. Um, So, anyway, those are your tides for today, the beach report uh be aware that uh, there's going to be some wind today and along with the wind raises the waves at the beaches so they look like they'd be about knee high today um the the biggest thing about the beaches is just be aware when all that water comes in it's got to go back out somewhere you don't want to be where it goes back out because you won't have any control over that Uh, and just take a look before you go in the water you'll see just be carefully take a look at the water you'll see all that water coming in typically finds an area where most of it it's not all of it goes back out again you can watch it wash itself back out again you don't want to be in around that area and uh today's looking at the uh at the uh radar map um very little activity going on a little bit happening down in miami area um but other than that we're pretty clean with regard to the radar so um the marine forecast says it's going to be one to two feet but uh the winds seem to be picking up they're saying uh, up to 14 knots right now they're two to eight uh but they're supposed to be picking up during the afternoon so i'm surprised that we don't see a uh, small craft warning we're in the area that we're in today but uh, don't let that stop you from going out and enjoying what god has given us we have water everywhere and the fishing is really good right now from what i hear the fishing is really uh really on the spot uh, and I failed to find out, are, is it, are we having a full moon, or we've already passed a full moon? Do you know? You know, I don't think we have a full moon right now, because I was out last night, and I, I would have noticed it. Um, but, yeah, I can tell you, though, it is really rough. You know I love my live beach cams. So I can tell you that the, the uh, seas are probably breaking uh, two feet easy on the beach right now. Wow. And uh, just, just a quick thing to tell people about rip currents, too. Uh, easy way, uh, which there are rip currents in South Florida today is uh if you stand on the beach and you feel that sand going right out from underneath your feet uh collapsing on your feet that's probably not a good place to enter the water <laughs> so that's a good a good uh, thing that i've noticed yeah that is one of the ways you can 
And if you happen to, God forbid, if you happen to get caught up in it, um, you don't try to swim against it. That's just futile. Uh, what you want to do is you want to swim par- uh, parallel to the shore as much as possible. And then once you find yourself away from it, um, you can swim back. I got caught up in it when I was, I guess I about 16 years old, around 16 or 17. It was a very scary thing. It's it, The scary part is how fast you can be pulled out and how far you can be pulled out. Uh, you can be pulled out like a 100, 150 yards, literally in seconds. Literally, it's just amazing. And that kind of adds to the, the to the fear factor, if you will. And you don't want to be in that mode of mind. You want to you want to have your uh, all your senses working because you're going to need them in order to be able to get get away from that thing. Anyway, uh, that's just something that if you you know if you're not careful, you'll. And I, I think some of the lifeguards also take a look out for and they'll warn people hey don't go over there you know that kind of thing uh, and it is what it is so it doesn't look like it's going to be a really good day for for the boating but that doesn't mean you can't go fishing my gosh we have bridges we have canals we have the backwaters and we have the intercoastals uh so there's all kinds of places still to go just maybe the ocean is just not the preferred day today for the smaller craft of course if you got a what is it that you fish on a 62 foot viking <laughs> Is that what you're on? Oh, we're pretty spoiled. Yeah, we we fish on a 62 <laughs> Viking, and then that particular gentleman, you know, those folks, real captivating. He's taking delivery of a 43 foot brand new CV this week, also. My goodness. So, so. Yeah, so we'll be we'll be double spoiled, and uh, that what's great is uh, sometimes they'll let us take both boats out and pit the girls' team, split the team in half, and uh, pit them against each other and see how we do. So <laughs> that'll be a lot of fun too. Oh my see, gosh. See who talks the most smack, but. Uh, it's the generosity of uh, Wayne and uh, his team up there to allow us to fish his boats, which is wonderful. We appreciate it so much. Man, <laughs> that's amazing. I, you know, I, if, if on a day like today, if you had a 62-foot Viking, then I think it would be just beautiful. <laughs> it's, just not, it's not going to phase that uh, that size of a vessel. But if you had what I had, which is like a 24-foot wellcraft, well, that's a different story. <laughs> It's going to be up and down, right and left. It's not uh, it's not too pleasant for fishing. It um, it's harder to to keep your footing on the boat than it is to to uh, concentrate on the on the fishing, especially if you catch a fish and you're trying to reel it in, and you're trying to stand up and the boat's going every which way. So it's uh, t- today for those kind of boats is kind of eh, I, like I said. There's the backwater. We got the intercoastal. We got uh, a lot of canals. So there's a lot of other places you can go. Well, you know, and I always keep a folding chair in my car and a little uh, collapsible fishing rod because sometimes I head down to the Keys for a day trip um, just to see some customers, and I'll pull over to the side of the road and just throw, cast my line in and, uh, you know, and hope for the best. And, boy, I'll get, uh, yeah, those mangrove snappers are real good. You know, get a mm. couple of those uh, a couple of those little, uh, what do they call them? Uh, oh, a jacks right off the, oh, the, yeah. the pilings. They don't need anything. So they're fun. You catch them, you throw them all back, and, just clears your mind for a little bit, you know, put your toes in the water. So, uh, you know, I really, I love that. That's amazing. And of course you get to cheat because you live right on the water. So, uh, at, wor- at the worst condition, uh, you could just go out the, back- <laughs> out the backyard and wet a line. Gee. <laughs> oh my goodness. Right. And uh, we've had a Florida salt, the cow girl over here and, uh, she and I got a couple of milk crates out and just fished off the dock for a couple hours uh, in the middle of the night one day, and it was just fun as can be That's and awesome. quiet, and that was a, a moon phase. So, yeah, but I could tell you, boy, I'm, I'm looking out the window, and I'm close to the water. It is blowing big time. So yeah. uh, when you see those palm, high palm trees going, uh, you know it's rough out there. Have you, are you looking under the pier again? The, the... Oh, you know, the live pier cam, the Deerfield Beach pier cam. That is one of my favorite things to do, and I'll tell you, our listeners can find it if they look up Deerfield Beach Pier underwater camera, it comes right up, even on YouTube. And I'll put that on my big screen TV all day. It is so fun to watch. So if you're looking at that now, how, how what does that look like? Is there a lot of movement in the water? That's a good question. I'm going to look right now. Deerfield Beach underwater cam. I will let you know. And, you know, I just got a quick text from Terry, our first guest. They have a tower that might be down, so she might have difficulty calling in with oh, okay. uh, her cell phone, but she's going to keep trying. All right. Yeah, well, that's Terry Huffmaster. I think you told me she just uh, celebrated a birthday, so we got to wish her a happy birthday. Hopefully, she'll be able to, to make contact, and we'll be able to do that in person. But if not, just in case, happy birthday, Terry. Hope it was awesome, yeah. like you are. 
I have to tell you, I am on the Deerfield Beach Cam, and it's very, very cool underwater. It wow. is so clear, but you see these massive schools of fish right now that are facing the current, and they are you can see them rolling in the waves. So right in front of the camera, they're moving about a foot to two feet up and down in a nice rolling fashion. So you can tell it's really rough offshore, mm -hmm. but it's beautiful. The, the silver glitter right now of this bait fish that, that's on there is just amazing. <laughs> wow. Yeah, I, when I I looked that up one time, you gave you passed me the link, and I I looked it up, and it was, it was like sitting in my my uh, my office in my my studio, my makeshift studio, and and being inside of a, a giant aquarium. It was it was amazing all the different kinds of fish that would come by. I want to know where the camera is so I can drop my bait there. <laughs> You know, and how funny would that be if uh, if somebody we saw a hook pop in one day and like catch us one of those uh, snook or one of those big jacks or right. even the school of barracuda, and uh, it's a uh, I'm sending you a quick picture right now. One of the fish just smiles for the camera, but uh, it's <laughs> pretty awesome. amazing. Now that pier for our <laughs> listeners, that fishing pier, you can actually pay a dollar and go out there, and you could stay there all night, 24 hours, and fish off the end of the pier. And a lot of people will take their wagons. Uh, filled with gear and food and coolers, and they'll just camp out all night. And I think that's pretty neat. Hello we, there, darling. We oh, listen, who do we got there now? That sounds like Terry Huffmaster. It sure is because I finally got through. <laughs> well, Yay! We uh, just in case you weren't able to call in and, and we weren't able to tell you in person, we wish you a happy birthday. But now that you're in person, happy birthday, Terry. Thank you so much. <laughs> I, I know. And I, Go ahead, Karen. I was going to say, I actually called her and left her a really bad rendition of Happy Birthday on her voicemail. <laughs> oh, it was pretty good if you want to know the truth about it. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're I very sweet. I see that you've been uh, posting some pictures of some really nice fish that you're catching. Yes, sir. We've um, got our gator trout. Uh, wanting to move in, <laughs> so we've gotten on some nice ones a 28.5, a 30.5, wow. um, some nice reds. So, trout sober is coming this year. Wow, It'll go on till April. And well, so, how, how often do you, do you have bad uh, bad weather up there now, Terry? Or are you uh, you're pretty, pretty actually, good weather? We're actually drying out now, thank god. We were extremely wet for a while. We had lots and lots and lots of rain. It did not seem like it was ever Medicare. didn't seem like it was ever gonna stop. Mm. But it finally did and so we're getting all this fresh water out of these rivers. It's finally finishing up dumping, so the fishing's been a little bit better than what it has been. I just hope it stays that way. These storms are killing us. So, so we've been does the fresh water, um, does it kill the fish or it just makes the fish go someplace else? Yeah, what it does is, yeah, it puts too much fresh water in there and it causes them to move on down to where there's more um, salt. So they really are, they're not crazy about the fresh water at all. Hmm. Um, they prefer that um, salinity, that salt water. And um, so the more fresh water that comes out these rivers, because what goes up must come down. So mm. they come back and out in the mouth of these rivers, and they'll flush all these fish off. But, wow. um, yeah, it's getting better. It's getting exciting. I'm ready for I want Carolyn to come down here and go fishing with us and get on some of these trout because I wanted to reel on these better trout in, which so, I've never done before. And I think you and I are going to plan a trip real soon. I think you're about, what, six-hour drive, seven-hour drive yeah. for me, something like that? Oh, yeah, there ain't nothing to it, girl. When you get in the car and get there, I can come fish with you. You can come fish with me. <laughs> Can't wait. And I'll tell you, there was a tournament this weekend, Terry, that was canceled because it's so rough here off of the coast. So I'm so bummed out. But, you know, we're going to get you here for one of them lady tournaments, too. Oh, really? Oh, that's that's not good. Yeah, I'd be bummed out about that, too. Terry, what? We got, um, we got a tournament that I'm going to this weekend coming up with the Kids Can Fish. I want to ask you about the, uh, what did you call it, a gator trout? Yes. I, I'm not familiar with that. What, what what makes a gator trout? Gator trout is, um, 
it's just a big trout. It's like once it gets over like a certain inches, when you go oh, get into the big ones, yeah, yeah they'll uh, they'll call that the gator trout. But when they're you basic to the bigger ones, like bull reds. Like normally they call them reds, and whenever you get on bigger reds, they like to call them bulls. Hmm. And okay. the bigger trout, let like us call them gator trout. Or around here, where we're from, anyway. <laughs> And you're up in, I think I remember, you're like in North Florida, somewhere near, uh, the, is it the, you're near the West Coast, right? You fish the West Coast. We fish uh, down in Perry, Florida. The, yeah, that's uh, the West Coast. Okay. The Big Bend area. Yeah. Yep, sure do. And I was and the shocked. main thing we fish for is like trout, red, flounder. Had lot, we've had lots of um, carpins. Oh, that's wow. been kind of lingering around our area, too, which has kind of been killing me because that's one of my bucket fish. And they've been like, swarming the boat around the place. So I thought next time we go, I'm going to take my cobia rod and put a big old live fish on it and see if I can manage to get one to the boat. But they say they're hard to do. That's wild. Well, yeah, and Terry, Terry is a, a professional angler, and she is on so many covers and has stories in so many local magazines. Um, she's a legend, uh, Aww. which, yeah, Coastal Angler Magazine, you got Woods and Water Magazine. She's, she is spattered all over the cover with so many beautiful trout and fish and, and, uh, always has a smile on her face and those big old aviator glasses. I just think it's <laughs> awesome. <laughs> can tell oh, it's her with, so the, much, with the glasses. Thank you. That means a lot. I, I treasure every one of them magazine things. I just, you know, want the other people to look at me, whether it's men, women, children, and say, you know, if she can do it at her age, I can, and just get out the outdoors and get out from behind the uh, the technology and the computers and the phones and yep. get out in God's country. Amen. Absolutely. I, I keep saying if, if you are uh, somebody who doesn't like water, you're in the wrong place because God has gifted us with water everywhere. So this state is like a giant sponge. We have, I don't know, 10 million lakes <laughs> throughout the throughout the state. We have numerous rivers and, oh, my gosh, thousands, tens of thousands of canals. Uh, and then, of course, we have water on three sides of the state. So <laughs> if you're somebody who doesn't like water, you're in the wrong place. Oh, my gosh, amen, because it is God's country, and it's a blessing for what, him giving it to us because I love ocean fishing. I love fishing in rivers. I love fishing in lakes and ponds, but. You pretty much know what you're going to catch there. When you get out there on the ocean, you have no idea what you're going to catch or what mm. you're going to on that wow. And there's lots of fish we'll still catch now where we're like, okay, we got to look at this fish and see what it is. <laughs> My goodness. And, and I, I have I have to tell you, Rascala, um, Terry shared a video clip with me not too long ago. So not only does she get her, herself on the water all the time, she lives in an amazing area that has fields and fields of sunflowers. And she sent me a, a video of a crop duster coming down in her backyard and crop dust. And, right off, and she sent me the video right off the front porch, her back porch. It was amazing. So she's out in a beautiful uh, farm country as well. Sunflowers. So, so they, uh, it's being grown commercially? No, we grow them. We grow it ourselves back there because we also shoot birds. We do dove shoots when Susan comes in, and it's in right now. Um, we just have to pick the days that they're really in the water good. I mean, in the water, coming into the fields good. But, yeah, um, when we get a lot of rain like that, what Carolyn's talking about, it's hard for our farmers to get in there with the um, the high boys and wow. spray. So the crop dusters get to come in and do it. And it's amazing because it, I know that has to be a dangerous job, but they get low. They swoop up straight. They swoop down. But I absolutely love it when they do it behind the house because, <laughs> I don't know, it's just crazy. And when they see you out there videoing them, they kind of like to give you a little show. They too. show off a little bit. <laughs> yeah, they show off a little bit, which they need to. They deserve it. What they're doing is dangerous, and yeah. I have to say they're pretty yeah. talented for what they're doing. It, um, it It is amazing what they can do with those aircraft. I've, I've watched them. Uh, I, was in, I lived in Panama City for a while. I was stationed at the uh, air base there. And... Um, there was a place that we used to go uh, dove shooting, and uh, next to it was a farm, and th that man had his own aircraft, and he could get that thing to take off literally within, um, probably within 10 yards, 15 yards, and no oh, sooner absolutely. than it starts moving, and it's up in the air. It was amazing. In, in comparison to what we went through to get our aircraft up, it was it was truly amazing. I, I was shocked how quickly, and the landings are are pretty <laughs> they're pretty spooky as well. They'll come in and look like they're going to crash, and all of a sudden they break loose and they just come to a 
nice calm landing. It's just if you've never seen these crop dusters, or, or they're also called um, bush bush pilots. Bush pilots yes. do the same thing. Uh, they can yes. get their aircraft to be air, airborne literally within feet. It's just amazing what they can do, and the uh, the acrobats and what they can, how they can maneuver the aircraft is really, truly is amazing. My hats off to those guys. I I can't handle that kind of stuff. <laughs> no, thank no, you. my my hats are off to them too. It's, like I said, it's a dangerous job. Our oldest son is just about done with his uh, private private li- um flight li- um pilot license oh, wow. and so i think he he'll probably do some crop dusting in the future and that's probably when i'll be gnawing my nails down to the bed <laughs> <laughs> worried about him but oh, wow. anyway yeah my hats are off to them too it's awesome wow. Terry, well, tell, it us, tell us about the tournament you're going to in steen hatchy because that's uh we've had them on as a guest before too oh, yeah. that's upcoming yeah. right uh, that will be week after next i believe not this weekend coming up but the following weekend after that and it's the uh, the Nadia Girls Tournament, and so I'm going to head on out there, and I'm going to fish that tournament that day and see how I do. Wow. Hopefully, I'll do well. Um, they'll have prizes for you know all kinds of different things for you know prizes that you can win, and actually, where you get prizes if you don't have a boat boy, which they refer to like a guy going out with you on the boat on the water with a captain. So um, we're going to do that, me and the uh, girl that I'm going to fish with that lives out of Keaton. She's going to, um, we're going to do the, sh- we're going to do the fishing together and we're going to do it by ourselves and see um, how that works out. I got a good feeling. I think we're going to do good. We, we both fish some areas pretty well and know some sweet little holes to get into. It's just a matter if they're going to be there or not. Wow. Well, I'm tight lines and I, to and you. And I'm going to do some live videos from there too, so. Oh, cool. Tight lines yeah, I'm to gonna you. Do it. And, and I'm going to do some live videos there, so I'll be able to get y'all some action, hopefully. And next, this weekend coming up is the Kids Can't Fish oh. tournament that they're having over in Tybee Island. And, and is it one day, two day, or? It's going to be, uh, we're going to come down Friday. The tournament is Saturday and Sunday. And it's surf fishing for, it's uh, running of the bulls for bull red. Wow. And um, it's a great thing that they do. Carol, um, um, Carolyn knows what I'm talking about um, with Tom and little Caroline. Yeah, absolutely. So tell so tell our listeners, um, Terry, you you are you participate. You really help with that program, right? Yes, I like to promote them, and I've been helping, you know, putting them out there. And I'm going to go and help with this fishing event that they're going to put on. And there's going to be lots of nice new sponsors that's going to be there, and I'm also going to be going under media um, for Woods and Water magazine. Oh. So I'm going to get some um, videos and hopefully get some good article write-ups and stuff for the November issue um, to put in there. It's a great benefit for the kids. It's awesome. They do awesome. such a great job. Oh, when it benefits such the kids, job. that's a great thing. It's a lot easier to take care of them and bring them up correctly from kids than it is to have to deal with them once they become adults. So uh, I'm all for that, my friend. God bless you. Amen. And they're our future generation on the water. So, yep. you know, they, yep. they need to be taught at an early age, you know, and, and this day and time, um, you know, the rules and respect and, you know, yep. all, there's just, all, you could just go on and on and on, but it's just a wonderful thing that they do for these kids and I highly respect them, and they're a wonderful family. And, you know, Carolyn knows that. She's got to meet um, little Caroline, too, and we were at ICAST. And, um, so I'm really looking forward to next weekend to attending that. So I've never did a lot of star fishing, but I'm looking forward to it. But, you know, they're talking 40, 50-inch reds you're catching right My now. My goodness. They're running through there. Wow. That's some serious fishing. Oh, well, I, <laughs> I know. I'm ready. I wish you tight lines and... Uh... Well, I'm thinking about it. Let me see if I can get this to work. Oh, my God. I love it. You had it even say to Terry. I love it. Uh, Thank Terry. you. That yeah. means so have much to me. You made me smile. Yeah. Have Wish. a great day. Tight, tight lines, and I'm I'm going to check in with you tomorrow. We'll, we'll catch up. 
that sounds wonderful. Girl. I look forward to talking to you. And thank you guys again. That was so sweet. You made my day. God bless you, my dear. Wish you an awesome day. What's left of it here? And uh, God lines. bless you, too. We'll, we'll talk to you soon. Here we go. You're listening to the Fishing in Florida show. We'll be right back. When it comes to parenting, there are no perfect answers. But that's okay, because you don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. Teens in foster care will love you just the same. For more information on adoption, visit AdoptUSKids.org. A message from the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services, AdoptUSKids, and the Ad Council. Thinking of moving? Before you do anything else, call Diane Whitting. She provides a concierge service. Things like having your home or condo packed and shipped. Even take care of your home repairs or upgrades. Diane has the expertise to get it done. As a seller, you will have constant contact. She will furnish you with bids on any services that might need completion. Air conditioning, plumbing, handyman, and even cleaning. Living up north and have a home to sell here in South Florida? Just give her the keys, address, and a signature. Your payment will be wired when the property is sold. That's right, Diane does it all. Thinking of buying? Diane has great listening skills. Tell her what you want, give her your budget, and like a genie, she will make your real estate wish come true. There's no regrets when you choose Diane Wittick. To reach Diane, call 561-247-5478. That's 561-247-5478. Do you need toner for your Epson, Hewlett Packer, Canon, Brother, Apple, or Sharp printers? Look no further than Laser Technologies. In business for over 20 years, they offer the lowest prices on toner on the web. They can also repair your laser printers and toners fast and easy. Call their expert staff today at 561-792-9600 or email us at service at laser-technologies.com for all your toner needs. All toner is shipped nationwide. Why wait? Get the lowest prices on toner. Call or email us today. Do you have an unusual pet? Did you know that the Rainforest Clinic in Loxahatchee specializes in exotic pets? They see pets that other vets don't. Parrots and chickens, ducks, geese, turtles, snakes, goats, pigs, lizards, and even monkeys. Are you a beekeeper? Dr. Club, the first of her kind in the area? Yes, she takes care of bees as well. Dr. Susan Club has decades of experience and known around the world for her reputation as a premier avian vet. Located at 3319 E Road in Loxahatchee, just a short distance north of Okeechobee Road, you will find a modern clinic with in-house labs, which allow you to get your test answers quickly. You can find them online at www.susanclub.com. That's www.susanclubb.com. Or you can reach her at 561-795-4878. It's Dr. Susan Club. That's 561-795-4878. The Rainforest Clinic located in Loxahatchee. 561-795-4878. Want to give your pet the celebrity treatment? Have you heard of Holly Wolf Pet Grooming and Care in Royal Palm Beach? They're located just off State Road 7 and have been servicing the area for 14 years. Hollywood Pet Grooming and Care is the home of the Blueberry Facial, also specializing in tartar removal with eight years of assisting in dental procedures. Hollywood Pet Grooming and Care? They're more than just about dogs. They are the only experienced cat groomer in the area. They also cater to all breeds and sizes and open six days a week. Hollywood Pet Grooming and Care, located just north of the Super Walmart in Royal Palm Beach. You can find them at 250 Business Parkway. They specialize in shampoos with no extra charge. Flea and tick dips also available. Hollywood Pet Grooming and Care. You can give them a call at 561-793-9992. They also provide gift certificates for those looking for that special present. Hollywood Pet Grooming and Care. 561-793-9992. They're located in Royal Palm Beach. That number, 561-793-9992. Call for your appointment today. This station is now the ultimate power in the universe. We have ignition. Strap in. Five, five, four, four, three, three, two, one, one. All I grab my fishing pole and cast it in the water. I fish until dawn. Oh my, I caught a shark. I'm fishing and blowing on. When the sun shines all day.
Good morning from the Sunshine State. Broadcasting from Palm Beach County, it's the Fishing in Florida Show. Sundays from 8 to 10 a.m. And now, here's your host, Chris Gala. All right, we are back. It is the Fishing in Florida Show. Good morning, good morning. There's a lot of different ways you can listen to the show. I'll tell you about a few of them here. The easiest of all of those ways, of course, is to download our app. It's absolutely free. And, uh, you know, when you download a lot of this stuff, you, you have to agree to their terms and conditions. And they want access to your camera and they want your phone book. And they, we don't want any of that. We just want to be able to offer you the easiest way that we know of to listen to our network. And that is through our app. And uh, it is for the Android only at this time. Um, no spyware, there's no adware, and there's no push notifications, none of that stuff. It's like having a radio station, uh, it's like having a, 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 a radio tuner uh, and tuned to one radio station. And there's a wide variety of, of uh, shows on our station. Another way you can listen to us is if you have the TuneIn app, a big thank you to Marina Rock Radio. They allow us to use their servers on Sunday morning. Uh, and in uh, regard to that, that allows us to, to uh, reach their, all of their uh, people as well. So a big thank you to Marine Rock Radio. That's uh, Yacht Rock's uh, sister station out of Miami. Uh, so if you have the TuneIn app, that's another way you can listen to us. If you're on the web, you can just go to our website, which is fishinginfloridashow.com, and there's a player there. Or if you want to uh, visit our home network, the Trim Radio Network, you go to wtrmradio.com. There's a player there. If you're on Facebook, you can click on our Facebook page, which is Fishing in Florida Show. And uh, once you get to the page, if you click on Contact Us, you'll have another way to listen to us. So, uh, like I said, a lot of different ways you can listen to us. We're glad that you take the time to share with us and allow us to share with you some of the stuff that we we run across. And uh, for me, fishing was a vital component in my family as we grew up. My mom, fortunately, loved fishing, so we went fishing on a very regular basis. And I really believe that was part of the glue, if you will, that kept us very close-knit as a family. And I'd like to pass that on to other people. It's very enjoyable. It's relaxing. There's so many benefits. Um, and, of course, there's always a nice dinner waiting for you, too. <laughs> All right. Let me welcome back my, my, uh, my co-host. That's Carolyn with Atlas Tracks. If you want to protect what you love to the max, this is the young lady you got to talk to, Carolyn at Atlas Tracks. Welcome back. Well, thank you, Riscala, and it's, uh, it's really funny you mentioned always having fresh food and fresh fish. Um, I have so many local customers in the local area that when they come back in, usually they're dialing me and they leave a little cooler on the front porch for me, and I swing by and I get some fish, which is always better than the grocery store. It's, it's always, uh, and, and you know, the thing about it is you know it's fresh. I mean, it's, you, you get it at the grocery store, it could be, uh, who knows how old, but uh, you know, they and you see it that it's packed on ice, and uh, they try to keep it looking as fresh as possible. But I promise you, there's nowhere near as fresh as <laughs> you bringing it up yourself and cooking it that night, or one of your neighbors been out, you know, fishing, and hey, listen, we got an extra one of these or that. Would you like one? Absolutely. Uh, you can't get much, much, much fresher than that. Uh, so anyway, yeah, like I said, there's a lot of benefits to it. It's relaxing. It's uh, it's 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 challenging you know there there have been times when um i've gone out fishing and planning on catching fish and hey it just didn't work out we didn't we didn't catch anything that was worth keeping or, or we didn't catch anything that was legal size uh, and so you end up you know coming back home empty-handed but if you are somebody who enjoys the water there is a relaxation that comes with it uh that even what is that they say the worst day uh, at fishing is is better than the best day at work or something like that for me that's true um, if i go fishing and i don't catch anything but i get to go out there and enjoy the the ocean uh that's better than it, 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 again if i come back empty-handed i've still got the the joy of being out there and relaxing and away from everything it's kind of a its own little world so to speak out there right and that how you feel carolyn uh, I 100% feel that, and I have to tell our listeners a hysterically funny story. So the girls were fishing a tournament uh, about five years ago on a, a boat that was donated, and the gentleman was, was much older. And uh, we were down in the cockpit working the lines, and we kept thinking to ourselves, boy, we, it seems like we've seen this spot before. Why, why is he not trolling and zigging and zagging back and forth? We go up to the bridge. He was so relaxed, he fell asleep 
and the, the boat was going round and round in circles. <laughs> awesome. That's awesome. Oh my gosh. Now that see, that's how relaxing it can be out there. It really is. It's uh it's one of those things. Like I said, it's, it's your own little world, so to speak, out there. And it's amazing. Um, I've been out 25 miles offshore. I think it's probably the first I ever went with my little my little dinghy. And uh, all you see is water all the way around. It was one of those days where the ocean was like a giant pond. It was just like a big puddle. There were hardly any waves at all. There was very little bit of um, weed action going on. There wasn't a lot of seaweed floating around. It wasn't a lot of debris or anything, but it was so calming. Uh, you, I could see if I, if you were out on a day like that and being on that would easily put me to sleep. It was a very gentle rocking motion. Uh, we ended up finding a tree, out of all things, a, a huge tree floating upside down in the water. It had all its branches, but all the leaves were had fallen off of it. And inside of this tree were just, oh my gosh, I can't, maybe... Maybe hundreds of, of dolphin, peanut dolphin at the top, a little bigger dolphin down below, and then a big marlin. Uh, I think it was a marlin. It was either a marlin or a big sailfish. I'm pretty sure it was a marlin. Kept coming in and out, p- taking a pick of, you know, picking them off here and there. Uh, it was just the most amazing thing in the world to find in this calmness of the sea where very little bit of, of uh, action going on. And then you come up on this this tree, and oh my gosh, all pandemonium! You talk about chaos! Oh my goodness, we were we had pulled in sixty five dolphin that day. Sixty five. Wow. And and the average way the average was about thirteen pounds, sixty five of them. We cleaned fish for hours, got back. We cleaned fish for hours. I called my friends. I called the, some of my the people at the church. I got a hold of my mom and dad. Uh, everybody was eating dolphin for about a week there. <laughs> it was great. It was phenomenal. It was amazing. I, it was one of the most amazing trips I've ever been on. Um, you know, I mentioned earlier about y- you go fishing, and for whatever reason, you come back empty-handed. Not too long ago, Father's Day, uh, last Father, not this one, but the one before, my son took me out on a, I think I shared this with you, my son took me out on a boat, and we went out and caught snook. Oh, my gosh. These huge snook, but it wasn't snook season. <laughs> we had to throw them back, and I was so mad. Oh, my goodness. These easily 30 pounds, 35 pound snook. Uh, they were just I remember gorgeous. Oh, it just did not sit well with me. <laughs> we had to throw these things back. It wasn't, they were everywhere. That was, that's another uh, fishing trip that I, that I went on. It's just like something that, you know, they, 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 what would you call that? They pre-stage. They, they go out and they look at an area and go, there's a lot of fish here. Okay, so now we're going to pre-stage that area. We'll get the video all set up. And as soon as you throw in the line, you're going to be catching fish and people are going to be amazed. And it was like that, except there was no video. <laughs> and yeah, it a- nothing, nothing like, yeah, nothing like pre-fishing. And then, uh, you know, especially when you're, or you're out of those particular fishing time zones or seasons. And uh, that's when they all come out to play, whether it be lobster yeah. season, whether it be snook. Um, it's pretty amazing how that works. And uh, I know, you know, what you mentioned, you roll up on a log or, um, you know, for our listeners, it's, it's what happens is these things, logs or bags or floating buckets create shade. And boy, it brings a small bait fish, which brings yeah. the bigger fish and the bigger fish. And, and I think I fished a, a, a Publix grocery store bag one time and it, it was crazy. You, you, you could walk on the dolphin. That's how many there were. Oh my goodness. We tried then, Somebody told us to try this, and we and and we failed miserably. But have, did you ever hear about taking a, like a tarp or something and putting uh, floats on each corner, and setting it out and letting it set out there and just watching it and and supposedly the, it creates the shade and the, the little bait fish find it for whatever reason. Now you've created your own little um, area for the for the mahi to come run through. We tried it one day. Wow. We, we were re- relatively patient. I think we waited almost three hours and got. <laughs> Got nothing but a sunburn. Got a sunburn, uh, but it was a neat trick. We tried it. You know, you ever tried wow. anything like that? No, but that's a really cool idea. I mean, that's a great way to bring your your fish to the boat. And I always think, mate, your boat should act as shade. And why aren't they just hanging out underneath the boat? Yeah. Um, but yeah, but, uh, yeah. Well, like, they, was, they choose a bag. This thing was pretty big. It was like twelve by twelve, I think it was. Twelve or fifteen by fifteen. It was pretty big. It was a pretty big tart. And let me. 
I'll tell you, and I think I've told this story to the, you and the listeners before. We went out one time, and there were so many dolphin around the boat, and that's mahi mahi that you can eat, not dolphin flipper. Yeah. And we were, they would not bite a hook at all. Uh, My friend uh, got a gaff out and started free gapping them, and he was just scooping them right into the boat with a gaff, and I uh, never saw that before. I, and we ran across. I've run. And it wasn't dolphin. It was. It was another fish. I'm not sure. I, Blue Runner I, comes to mind, but I, there were thousands of these. There were so many of them, the water was foaming. And I said, oh, my gosh, it's, it, look, I thought it was tuna. And we were racing over there and uh, cut the engines as we came across them and literally foaming in the water and didn't want to didn't want to have anything to do with any bait. But if you dropped the hook over, there were so many of them, you could hook one of them. That's, that's what it was like. It was just amazing. Some of the stuff that you see out in the ocean is it's almost indescribable. You tell people about it, and they go, oh, come on. That kind of stuff is that's not real. <laughs> if if I had a video of this, people would not have believed it. The water was literally foaming. That's how many fish were just swimming everywhere, literally everywhere. And uh, we th- we threw some bait over because we this was good bait fish, and we didn't have a net. Gosh, if we had had a net, oh lord, we'd have had a whole literally a boat load full of those things. Um, but if you drop a hook over, there were so many of them they'd bite the hook. <laughs> how crazy is that? Yeah. You know, and you can have the most expensive, beautiful bait, live bait, and they'll just they'll just look at it and do nothing with it, and yeah. it's nothing worse than coming That's back without catching anything. That's and then the worst part is you release all that bait back yeah. into the canal that you just paid a hundred dollars <laughs> for in the morning. That that is frustrating when they when they do that. It's like they're laughing at you. <laughs> I'm not touching right. that. And, a, and a, <laughs> unfortunately, where we are in the water. It's not clean enough to save the bait. So normally people would put it, the bait in a pen and feed it oh, during yeah. the week. Um, yeah. So we're not able to – we got a little bit of brackish water up here, so the bait won't survive. Uh, oh, but bad. it's amazing. The guys – like the guys from Real Captivating, they'll pen bait for eight months. They'll feed it, and it actually grows in these huge pens. Wow. Uh, so they really don't have to even go buy or hunt bait, you know, when they go do their fishing trips. Wow. I was shocked to find out that how expensive some of this bait can be. You get into the hundreds of dollars very quickly. Uh, it, I was really surprised that, that there were people who were just literally making a living out of doing nothing more than going out and catching bait fish to sell to the to the uh, fishermen, to the anglers. Um, it was, uh, you know, I guess I was kind of naive. <laughs> I don't know. But I was I was shocked at how much those, like a goggle eyes, I think the, you buy them by the dozen or like 100 bucks or something, right? Yeah, they're hundred dollars a dozen, and <sighs> for most tournaments, people will take five to six dozen out, maybe more. So there's six hundred, seven hundred dollars in bait, and we have uh, several we have several bait uh, customers that have trackers on their boats, and they'll go out and they'll they'll be out there in the middle of the night, and, you know, get the bait and bring it into the local marinas, which is where they sell everything, and uh, that's a hard that's definitely a hard business. And Joe Sedembrino, who uh, the fresh fish um, I remember gentleman, him. yeah. Yeah, he used to call in. He he would be out there doing bait all the time in the middle of the night, and you know, leave his family and go out and uh, to support the business. It's it's hard work, but wow. you know, they they command a good price. Right at a hundred dollars a dozen, I would imagine that uh, uh, it's well worth the the effort to get out there and, and get them. I, I don't know anything about netting other than the little bit of netting that we did as, when I was younger in, in uh, Bay. Uh, uh, I can't think of it now. My gosh. In the bay down in Miami, in Biscayne Bay. I couldn't think of the name. Lord, we got to get the brain working here. We were we did a lot of um, shrimping. When it was shrimp season, we would go down, take the boat out, and be floating around at, at night and uh, dragging these uh, large nets uh, and, and shrimping. Oh, my gosh, we'd get 20 pounds of shrimp a night easy without any problem. Uh, and we'd be eating shrimp for a week. <laughs> All kinds of shrimp, peel and shrimp, peel and eat, or uh, or uh, boiled shrimp, or um, fried, uh, just a- any way you can imagine. Shrimp, shrimp, shrimp for a whole week. Um, it was it was a lot of fun, but it got to be it got to be a pain because uh, it got so popular that it became literally like a parking lot. You had to watch out. There would be so many boats in the water. You literally had to watch out for each other because they would be literally feet away from each other. Um, and when I got to that point, I said, that's enough. We're not doing that anymore. It's, no, it's not fun anymore when you got to worry about somebody running into you. And the, Some of the people were very, um, I don't know whether it was ignorant or 
just lack of respect. But they'd, they'd be, now imagine you've got a, I had a 24, and a lot of the boats were pretty close to my size, maybe even a little larger. Some of these guys are out there dragging this stuff around. They don't have lights on their boat. And the nets that they're dragging, when I say we were dragging nets, I'm talking about like dip nets. We weren't, we didn't have nets tied to the boat. These guys had nets tied to their boat, two foot by four foot nets that would run 15 feet behind their boat. No lights on the net, no lights to show you where the the line from the boat to the net was. It was just became a nightmare. That's that's when I stopped. Prior to that, it was a lot of fun, but then when all these people got jumped in and decided to make it part of their <laughs> part of their lifestyle, it uh, it kind of ruined it for everybody else. Um, anyway, well, go ahead. I was going to say, um, you know, there's, it's funny, um, depending on what you're fishing for, there's bait of every size. And I had the, uh, the, the wonderful um, adventure of going out and bait fishing for what are called bonita, which are basically little, little tunas. Mm -hmm. And we were fishing for those to go marlin fishing. And just to pull in the bait and was pretty amazing. I mean, you know, so we, cat we caught maybe 40 or 50 of them. And I think I mentioned before, you stick them, you keep them alive, and you stick them face down, head down in these um, tubes, these PVC tubes that have continual water flushing through, and it keeps them alive. Um, and you're ready to, you know, put one on a hook. You, you just pretty much grab it by its tail and put it on the hook. But it was worth catching these, these tunas. You were actually trolling um, to catch bait, which was, you know, four or five pound bait that was a foot long for That's the fish, amazing. the marlin that were, you know, 10, 12 <laughs> feet long. But wow. that was a lot of work, and it was so much fun. Wow. Well, we have our next guest on, and that's Betty Bowman. Betty is with Ladies Let's Go Fishing. And um, welcome, Betty. Good morning to you, my friend. Good morning. Can you hear me okay? Sure can. There you find. Good. Yeah, so Betty shared with me that she hurt her arm. What, what were you doing you hurt your arm? Uh, just uh, There was some algae in the driveway, and... Boom, boom, I'll go to the lights. Oh, ah. Wow. Well, uh, if you are, I think you're down in the Pompano area. Is that where you are? Fort Lauderdale, Pompano? Uh, Fort Davy, West Fort Lauderdale. Uh, so if you're anybody out in that area that can give Betty a hand, she could use it. She's got some moving she has to do. When when you have to do some moving, Friday? Uh, I start, um, well, I've already started. Um, I get some help here and there. But, yeah, I have one hand, so another hand would be great. <laughs> I still have my mind. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. <laughs> that, that that definitely helps. Uh, so for those of, who may not know what uh, Ladies Let's Go Fishing does, a little bit about what, uh, what you do, Betty. Ladies Let's Go Fishing is a year-long effort to attract and recruit and retain uh, female anglers and their families into fishing through educational on-site programs and virtual meetings to keep them energized. And on the on-site programs, uh, they have a fishing element where they have a chance to go fishing. Um, speakers, they learn, practice, and go fishing. And we, we do set up um, stations where they can practice different fishing skills, like how to tie their knot, how to cast, sometimes how to net cast, sometimes how to back a trailer. It all depends uh, which area and what the venue can accommodate. From A to Z, yeah, that's what I like to say about her. From A to Z, she's got it covered. From literally t showing you how to tie the knot to showing you how to cook the fish, <laughs> she doesn't leave anything out. It's ladiesletsgofishing.com. Yeah, fishing. and there's a the social element, too, because there's a lot of free seminars that you go to, and you, you listen, and you walk home. But with ours, we have social events where the ladies meet other ladies, and they make lifelong friends. It's really nice. I have one coming up in the Keys, October 15th through 17th, and I have ladies who like staying together and requesting to fish together that met at the seminar, and they do other things together outside of the seminar. So that, that helps cement them into the sport and give them a continual like support through other people they've met through the seminar. That's sort of a big thing of what we do that you know not too many other people do. I love it because, uh, like I've shared with you many times, in, in my life's experience, my mom fortunately loved fishing and wasn't intimidated and uh, because of that, we went fishing on a regular basis. And I really think 
that played a vital component in, in keeping us as a close-knit family because we all shared the same experience, but yet we had, within that experience, we had a different perspective. And uh, that really, we had skin in the game, if you will, if you, you could look at it that way. Um, and it, I really do believe it, it helped. And today, more than ever, families are under attack. There's so much some garbage out there to, to cause a division uh, among everybody as well as, uh, you know, not just families, but everybody. So something that you can do, all of you as a family, uh, and especially if the mom is interested and if the mom doesn't feel intimidated, this is an, uh, an excellent option for a family outing to go out and go fishing, everybody to go fishing. It's, it's really great. And I'm, this is why I, uh, I'm happy to have you on. I'm happy to help support you in and, and whatever way that I can uh, because this really, I believe everybody wins. When this is all said and done, people who know me know that I like a win-win. I like to fix it so everybody wins. Everybody wins with this because if we can help strengthen the family unit, we can help build a better society. And guess what you and I and everybody else are part of? We're part of that society, and we need that help more than ever right now. Oh, my gosh. Uh, things are just so insane right now. We need that help more than ever. Yeah, right and then we are also, you know, one of our, our, our biggest efforts to keep the program running is fundraising because, you know, what the ladies pay for registration doesn't really support uh, a year-long, seven-day-a-week, you know, effort. So, yeah, we're running an auction right now online. Oh, cool. It ends on Tuesday. We've got about 40 items. There's tackle, you know, Yeti coolers, um, fishing trips, tackle bags, um, a towel on, a lot of nice pen rods and reels. And and our auctions, it's not like these big organizations where everything goes for more than retail. Ours usually end up being very good deals, and a lot of items go for minimum bids. So uh, we do a few a year um, online. That anybody can bid on and then we also do some on site to get this tackle and equipment into these ladies homes and to give them you know starter kits so they have something to remind them hey i have this stuff i need to go fishing there you go <laughs> now when you're saying online it's it, it is at the regular website ladies let's go fishing.com yes there's a link to it uh we've got costa and smith sunglasses uh and uh we don't have that many bids, but sometimes people wait until the last minute. Mm -hmm. yep. uh, so it's really a, ni a nice selection of, you know, it's a nice varied selection of tackle and some. There's a Key West fishing trip with Mike Bartlett. There's a Tampa trip with Captain Scott Keith, and some Warbird gear, some APCO gear, some backpacks, cool. um, all kinds of fun stuff. Starbright for cleaning the boat or things around your house. All cool stuff. I think, uh, Carolyn, you, can, was that you that used the Starbright? Did you, was that your, am I thinking of somebody else? No, that's us. Um, they are wonderful. They are not only customers, but they donate product to the Pink Ladies Fishing Team to use. Awesome. Um, both myself and, and Angela, which we love. I love their Teak products. Um, I mean, everything. They have everything from boats and RVs and home cleaning and uh, UV protectant. Real great, great family business. And they support um, dogs and adoption. That's great, great oh, cool. Folks. Wow. Yeah, that's one reason why people should choose um, a product like Starbright, you know, because they support multiple organizations. And um, I like to use their bug off um, to spray my car or my boat when I go across the state and it's full of love bugs. Um, <laughs> the they, they have just, <laughs> and the salt off, too. So when you, you know, your trailer's been in the water, um, you can spray that because. You know, trailers, silver trailers turn gray after a while. It doesn't so take long. So you have long. to maintain, you know, your trailer. You know, Magic Tilt's a sponsor, and, um, you know, you a trailer is really an important element when it comes to your fishing if you are launching your boat. Yeah, you aren't kidding. Trailers, everything. Without your trailer, if you're somebody that, uh, unlike Carolyn, Carolyn's lucky she's on the water. She can just drop the boat right there. But if you were somebody like me who had to, wherever you wanted to go, you had to trailer that boat. That trailer is quite vital to the operation of the whole thing. If you can't trailer your boat, you're you're out of luck, my pa my friend. Uh, so, yeah, trailer is very, very important. I, I, I totally 100% agree with you. And so I, I think you told me, uh, Betty, I, th I think it was you that said you even show the ladies how to back up on with a trailer. Was that you? 
Yeah, yeah. I mean, it depends on the venue. Um, you know, Magic Tilt like sends said, their <laughs> um, uh, driver, uh, Tony Dipolito, and um, what he does is, you know, shows he shows them, you know, little tricks to um, remember when you get all nervous and everybody's staring at you with their beady <laughs> eyes, saying, yeah. "Hurry up, lady." Yeah. <laughs> You're like, yeah. hey, you know, it may take me a little longer, but I'll get it in there. Yeah, yeah well, you know, you get it in there and get it in there safely. Um, and it, it, there is a, it is kind of, um, what's the best word? To, it, it, you have to be dyslexic in order to be able to back up. <laughs> in order to be able to back up with a trailer. Because when you turn to the right, the trailer goes to the left. When you turn to the left, the trailer goes to the right. So you got to remember that in your mind when you're when you're backing these things up. And if you turn too late, then, then you got to go. You got to stop and go forward and start over again because uh, you get to a point where you can't recover. Uh, so there is a bit of a, a skill revolved uh, involved there. And uh, anybody who takes the patience and the time to show others, God bless you. <laughs> I tell you, it makes it a lot easier on the rest of the people who are on the uh, the ramp as well. Because I've seen some pretty. I can we we could do a whole show just about about boat ramps the the nightmarish things that happen at boat ramps that uh, people pull and the faster you can get in and and the faster you can get out the better it is for everybody you as well <laughs> because people are. Oh, I know one time we were in a tournament and my husband was just all happy peppy and just excited about it and um, he put the boat in reverse before the trailer was unhitched and almost towed the whole oh my rig gosh. into the water. <laughs> Oh, Lord. There's a boat ramp down at John Penny Camp. Uh, I watched a guy with a BMW put his boat in. It was a sailboat. It wasn't a really big boat, but the the ramp there, the the angle of the ramp is quite treacherous. And uh, he, apparently this was a manual drive. I mean, he failed to put the, he had turned the car off, which is first mistake. And then the second mistake was he failed to put the parking brake on. He All, all he did is <clears throat> left it in gear. And before you know it, the the all, whole thing, trailer, car, everything was in the water. It was so sad. It was funny to watch, but it was sad afterwards to realize this guy just ruined his car. Car looked like it was almost new, uh, and the boat was, uh, you know, boat was pretty fine condition. So you got to be careful. Like I said, there's a lot of nightmarish things that, that you can talk about. We do a whole show <laughs> about the about the boat ramps. So that is a vital component of of knowing how to back up, how to get the boat off properly. How to get at, get in and get out, and uh, so you can enjoy your day, and other people can enjoy their day because there have been times where I'm sitting and waiting and waiting, and people are they're like they're, they have no idea that other they they can see us, but it's like oh well I got to do this first and I got to do that. They're taking care of things that they shouldn't be taking care of. Uh, they're they're putting ice in their cooler while a boat is up on the trailer. Um, they're just doing things that they, you know, start, to me, if you're going to go to the boat ramp and you're going to put your boat in, what you want to do is get your get your boat backed up and get your boat in the water and get out of there. If you've got to cut bait or if you've got to put ice or whatever that is, that should have already been done before you get there. But there are people who don't think along those lines, and it makes it, you know, makes it tough for the rest of us. So to learn correctly from the beginning is, is awesome. So you said October 15th to the 17th is down in the Keys. What's coming up after that? Well, the Keys one is in Isla Morada, and the ladies can pick inshore and offshore. We're pretty full. I had I just opened an offshore boat. I had like three. I need six. And I was like, you know what? I'm going to book the boat, and I know we'll get a couple more sign-ups. After that, uh, that same weekend, we have um, a bass tournament, and ladies can compete in uh, the tournament, learn how to uh, catch bass at uh, a seminar and have a uh, you know, kickoff party with a bonfire and all that, that's full. Um, then we have November 20, 21st, St. Augustine Surf Fishing. And in that, we included a golf cart tour. I mean, it's, it's additional. It's like $25. But uh, you go by golf cart into St. Augustine to watch the Night of Lights, where they light up everything from the roof to the, to the ground. And they stop for dinner at the Columbia usually, and it's really kind of a fun thing. So that is a half-day fishing. They can pick fishing Saturday or Sunday. The fishing's in the afternoon because of the tide, and uh, Noel Kuhn will be conducting it. That's at the Guy Harvey Resort in St. Augustine, uh, where there's a nice white, like a wide beach right 
behind there that they can fish from, and up there you can drive cars on the beach if you have four-wheel drive. Wow. That sounds like a lot of fun. Uh, I'd like to see that, the, the night of lights. I, I, I can't imagine what that See, You know, you see this stuff in video, but if you see it in person, it's completely different. It's a totally different experience. I bet that would be awesome. So that is going to be yes. no, November the 20th and the 21st? Yes. And what's coming up after that? I'm planning for next year. So we're already in the 21, 22, oh, my God, 22. I'm having a hard time understanding how the heck we got from, <laughs> I keep thinking it's like 2014 to me. I don't know where all the time, it's just like blink an eye. It's like this morning. We spend two hours on Sunday morning, Carolyn and I, and it's probably the fastest two hours of my life. Am I right, Carolyn? There's no doubt. I, I, it's amazing. Blows we blink, by we do so fast. Breaks. Oh yeah, my gosh. Totally goes by so fast. And oh. I have to. I have to tell you, there's a hysterically funny bo um, boat trailer video. I'm gonna have to get it and put it on the, our Facebook page. It's um, Family Guy, and it's how how long it took him to back into the slip and uh, or down the ramp, and it's just continual jackknifing. It's hysterical. So I'll have to <laughs> find that put that on there. I encourage. Oh. The ladies to practice, you know, go to a school when they're not open, I guess, I guess if it's legal, you know, just find an area and just practice before you get to the yeah, boat ramp. Yeah, lots of practice. You don't want to, you don't want to learn at the boat ramp, especially if there's people waiting. They will not be kind to you. <laughs> it will not go well. <laughs> you want to be as prepared as possible before you go. And one of the best things to do one of the best places to find that knowledge uh, online is if you go to ladies let's go fishing dot com um, just a, a vast amount of information available there so that's awesome so you, we've got August excuse me we've got August Lord have mercy we've got October and we've got November and then we're going into 2022 can you believe this 2022 wow well Betty thank you I appreciate you sharing with us and uh, I'll be looking forward to having an update from you I uh, wish you an awesome day and, and uh, prayers of healing for your arm to uh, to get better and keep the pain down to a minimum for you. Hey, I just want to be able to use the keyboard for my computer. Right now I can only type like four <coughs> words. <laughs> but, um, you know, it gets better day by day. It's it's life. Things happen. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm sorry that that happened to you, and I wish you the best and uh, an awesome day to you. And thank you for what you do. I mean that. I appreciate what you do in helping the ladies become familiar with what has been generally a, a male-dominated sport. And uh, fortunately, we've got the females involved, and, and doing that helps bring the families together. So I appreciate that. A lot Carolyn? of people would give up in this situation, but you know what I mean? The show must go on. Yep. Even in pain, I keep it going. God bless you. <laughs> I wish you an awesome day. Let me give Carolyn an opportunity to say goodbye to you. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, when I get down there all the time to Outdoor World, I always think about the uh, the class you did in that awesome little lake right out in front of the building. Mm. So, uh, you know, thanks for what you do. And it's what's really important is the ladies that do your seminars don't have to have a boat. There's there's plenty of boats that you help them get, which is, you know, take some of the fear factor out. So thanks for what you do. We will keep it going, and you all have a good week. All right, my dear. Thank you. Thank you. Greatly appreciate it. Okay, Carolyn, I think we have our next guest on, and that's Brett. Brett is, uh, I think he's out, out of state right now. Welcome, Brett. Good morning, my friend. Good morning. Good morning. How are you today? Pretty good. You're, are you out of the state this, this morning? <clears throat> I am. I am. I'm in, I'm in Mississippi this weekend, but it's not fishing related. Oh. Uh, it's, this is a busy time of year for me. It seems like I, I honestly think every weekend for the rest of the year, I'm, I'm gone somewhere doing either a fishing tournament somewhere or um, something along those lines, was, but I guess that's the way it's that's the way I like it because I keep doing it to myself. <laughs> <laughs> so prior to you heading up that way, were you able to do some fishing prior to all of that? Yeah, actually, this is the you know, of course, the the mullet are are working their way down. So this is a really one of my favorite times of year to work the beach because there's something going on almost no matter what the weather is like along are you know the coast here in, in palm beach county if the wind is picking up a little bit and you've got larger swells coming down and the mullet are really pushing through you just tackle up a little bit bigger and and fish the mullet run itself hmm. 
but on days that it's calm and flat and clear, you can still dial down and, and work the beach, look for areas of structure, and, and it's still a great time of year when it's like that to go snorkeling and, and see what we have here in our coast that a lot of people just don't realize. They just look out and see blue water, but we really have some of the best near shore reefs that you can take your kids as young as three and four years old and walk out to water that's ankle or knee deep in some of these little beaches. Um, Phipps Beach in Palm Beach, Palm Beach County comes to mind that there's really great near shore hard bottom that you can access. And there's almost always little fish there swimming around. And, and this time of year, there's still tropicals and real pretty things to see. Mm. How cool is that? I remember my parents taking me to, I, I grew up in, in the Coral Gables, which is a city inside of Miami, and we had a place called Matheson mm -hmm. Hammock, and in this place that they took me uh, had, it seemed like miles and miles, I'm sure it wasn't, but as, as a young person, it seemed like it, miles and miles of sandbar when the, uh, when the tide went out, and we would walk the sandbars and we would find all kinds of things, uh, horseshoe crabs, regular crabs, blue crabs. Um, just a mm -hmm. wide variety of sea life. And I was always so amazed at all this. You get to look at it, touch some of it, you get to touch some of it. you got to be careful. You can pick up one of those blue crabs the wrong way, you're going to be paying. Um, right. But, you right. know, you get to experience it firsthand, and that's, that was really, really amazing to, to be able to do that. So you remind me of that when you talk about that. So that's awesome. It's And you can go watch this stuff. And it was like two, three foot of water? Literally, it's it's real shallow like that. And yeah. it's... Wow. You know, I still remember the first time I went there and saw that. It was a, it was really mind blowing that that was there and and it was accessible. And you know, I, I've probably taken hundreds of people there, to, and they they are the same way. They just wow, I never knew you could do this. That's and I cool. still go and and snorkel it, and I'll bring a little pole spear sometimes. I went, a couple weeks ago, I went and we got um about a half a dozen nice little mangrove snappers. Mm. Um. You know, it's just something a little different to do that still is fun and, and productive. Wow. It certainly gets away from the technology and enjoying the water, which is, uh, to me, that's one of the best things that you can do. One of the greatest blessings that yeah. we have. Wow. <clears throat> I didn't know that uh, that you could even do anything like that around here. I figured that uh, if you wanted to do any serious snorkeling, you'd have to. I'm spoiled. I used to, we used to go to the, the Keys to do anything like that. We had mm -hmm, my favorite sure. spot down there. And it is, it's <clears> like, it's like being in literally being in an aquarium in some of these areas this one place that we would go uh down there there was fish everywhere it's like stuff that you see on uh, a, a video like a national geographic or something there's just tons of these right. little bitty tropical really pretty colored fish everywhere right right it's a it really it's a, a unique experience i'm glad you shared that because i had no <laughs> idea that we had anything like that around here we have and you know we're coming up kind of on the end of the time of year where that they're all there because as the water cools down a lot of those tropicals and move off but you know the trade-off is that now we're moving into the time of year that the surf fishing picks up for things like pompano and bluefish and and if you're able to cast out a little further you know you'll start to see some spanish mackerel moving in but mm -hmm. for those we wait for the you know first couple of cold fronts to push down some cooler weather weather and cooler water we had a cool morning this morning. Now that you mentioned that, that was one of the things that stood out to me. When I walked out the door this morning, it was actually almost like air conditioning. I haven't felt that in... <laughs> almost, almost. Almost pleasant. Almost. It was... I went, oh, whoa, what is that? And we had a, a gentle <laughs> breeze, and the breeze was cool. Instead of feeling like you're under a, a, a hair dryer, uh, it was a cool, crisp breeze. I don't know, it's probably gone by now, but it was a... A welcome change, I'll tell you. Yeah. <laughs> what was, what yeah. we've had uh, in the last, oh, my gosh. I, I get up on Sunday mornings, and I, every morning I walk my dog. And Sunday mornings is the earliest of all those because we do the show. And uh, I typically get up on Sunday mornings and get out the front door, and it's like walking into a sauna. It was so pleasantly uh, different this morning, walking out. And it, the air was mm. drier. It was cooler. Uh, like I said, I don't know how long it will last, but it is a gentle, it is a gentle, it is a welcomed uh, change and uh, look, looking forward to what's coming uh, with the cooler weather yeah. for us. You know, one last thing on the uh, on the beach there. <clears throat> it doesn't happen very often, but I would say in the past few years, half a dozen times where I'm snorkeling along the rocks at, at Phipps Beach, there I actually see lobsters in there that oh, are wow. keeper size. And you know, mini season gets a lot of press. 
but the actual lobster season itself picks up a week or two after the mini season's over and it runs through March. So it's currently lobster season now. And if I'm walking the beach and, and getting in the water, I should always bring my net, my little lobster net and the measuring tool because you still need to measure, of course. But it's not impossible to find deeper sized lobsters oh. right there along the structure. How awesome that would be. In Palm Beach County. It's a, it's a nice kids, surprise when it happens. Take your kids snorkeling, give them a little net, and they come back with a couple of lobster for you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. How awesome that would be. Now, the other, you know, the snook is my favorite fish, and this is a really fun time of year to fish them at night at the lights because typically when you're targeting snook with a fly rod at night, you use these really tiny flies, and you catch a lot of snook, but they're in that 20, I would say they average around 20 inches. But this is a time of year with the mullet coming through that you can change up and go a little bit heavier and use a larger fly and work the lights just like you would typically start in the darker sides and cast slowly in and towards the light. But you got a better chance of catching um, a much bigger snook on the fly this time of year. At least at least mm-hmm. I do. I find it that way. I bet so that it's, a, is... it's a fun time to get out. And... I bet that's a heck of a challenge. You catch them on a fly. Wow. <clears throat> Surprisingly... Um, well, I usually go like in a kayak at nighttime and because of that, you can get up pretty close to the lights. You don't have to be a really great caster when you're working them that way because you can almost get right up on them. And mm. I, I know I've caught more snook that way than any other way combined in right. my life. It just becomes surprisingly easier. You just got to take the initiative and get out and, and, and do it a couple of times. So that reminds me, one of the areas, one of my most favorite areas as a child when my dad would take us fishing was Naples. He would drive us over to Naples, and Naples had its own pier. And at at, at night, at the end of the, or at every interval, I don't know what interval was, but they had lights. And uh, very commonly, if you went out to the very end of the pier, there were men out there with what appeared to be like a bamboo pole, but it was something different. But it looked like what a bamboo pole would look like. And they would put this, again, as, as a kid, this is how I remember it. It may not be actually this way. It would look like a piece of silver pipe with a hook on the end of it. And <clears throat> they would they would take this thing, and it was long enough to reach the water down, down at the water with a very short, maybe five or six feet of line on it. It wasn't very much. And they would do it in, uh, like a figure eight in the water. And part of it would be under uh, un- where the light was, and then part of it would be uh-huh. where the shadow was. And I was shocked to find out that they, they would sit there and do this. It would take them a while, maybe 15 minutes of doing this over and over and over. And I think what they were doing is they, they would upset the fish so bad they could snap at it. And as soon as they did, they caught that fish. They pulled up some seriously big snook there doing that. <laughs> and, and what reminded me of that is you talking about <coughs> in and out of the light, because that's what they were doing. They were in and out of the light, and that was causing them to, you know, to, to catch those snook. It was, it was uh, pretty, pretty wild stuff. Yeah, that's a, I, you know, I haven't seen anyone do that in a long time. But that's a trick that, that's an old musky fishing trip up north. Is that what that is? That's one of the ways, yeah, that's a, one of the ways. So is it a, is it a bamboo pole, do I remember correctly, or it just looks like it? <clears throat> um, it depends on how long ago. <laughs> it, uh, to see it be a bamboo pole now, it might be a little more rare. But, I, you know, but um, the, you know, the idea is that it's something that's long enough and, and depending on what you're doing, at least for muskies, it was something that was a little stiffer that they could really just get it whipping fast in that figure eight motion. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that was, that was crazy. Work. <laughs> that was really, to watch them do that, the patience that they had and the commitment, I mean, it, it, took, it took a while. It, it wasn't something like they just dropped it in the water and literally a minute or two later, it took a while. And uh, yeah. that, that commitment paid off because they caught some seriously nice fish. Yeah, and that area, and that, of course, the pier is still there. I was just over there last weekend and fishing um, south of there from Marco Island down to Tintoffman Islands. <clears throat> and this is a great time of year over there, too, because there's there's not a whole lot of big fish, but, um, you know, there's a good chance that each day you can catch a good number of, of smaller snook and, you know, tarpon in the two-foot-long range up in the backcountry there. And there's some, some big redfish and some big trout. But it's a good time to travel over that way and do some mm. exploring too. So when and you then, look, you know, I write that. No, go ahead. I was going to go ahead. I'll let you go and I'll ask you. Go ahead. 
I was just going to say, you know, because I write the um, tropical column, the tropical insider column for Florida Sportsman, I've always, you know, keeping track of what's hot around the tropics. And I thought a good time if you're thinking about a bucket list of places to go, this is this is a time of year that um, Pacific sail fishing along in Panama and Guatemala and those areas is, is really insane. And people get on there to catch you know, amazing. ridiculous numbers you're of sail fishing much... marlins. You pretty much a- answered the question I was going to ask you. I was going to say, when you get back, where would you like to be fishing at? And there you go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that and, and it's it's it, and it's a transition time in the Bahamas, too, for bonefish, where the schools start to get a little bit smaller, but the fish get a little bit bigger. So um, some of the more remote areas in the Bahamas, like in the Andros Islands, or, you know, there's a neat little spot that I was just writing about down on Ragged Key. It's real close to Cuba. Um, that has really big bonefish. This would be a great time to go try to explore mm-hmm. a place like that and try to get a, a you know, lifetime bonefish. Wow. That's uh, great ideas, great fishing options, great places to go. Um, I think that you live in uh, Palm Beach County, am I right? That's correct, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. Lake Worth Beach. So one of, one of, what is one of your favorite places here in Palm Beach County to go fishing? Well, if I'm going to the beach, I, I pretty much go to Phipps Beach there, which is just about a mile and a half north of um, Lake Worth Beach, just because I know it's got the structure and um, and it goes on for miles. So you can walk north for a couple miles and you can find old piers from way back in the day, like little oh, seawalls really? that are half half wiped out. Wow. Um, that are private piers, you know, and they hold a lot of fish, but it's a hike. You know, it's one of those things I'm not afraid to tell people about because mm-hmm. you've got to park your car and walk to get to those spots. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, but sometimes but, it's and worth I also it, love, you know? you know, I live on a freshwater system. This is a great time for that too. Right now, there's a lot of water moving from the middle part of the state. So if you have, if you're a freshwater fishing, you, you know, you want to try to find those pockets where there's not a lot of water rushing through because it's, the water's dirtier. Um, it'll blow out some of your more typical spots. So I'd be looking for the little pockets in the canal systems that are dead ends and the water's still clean. Um, there's a lot of hyacinth in the water right mm-hmm. now that has been pushed out from somewhere. Um, so, you know, trying to find that still water that's that's connected to the big water, but not in the main flow, that's where I would be fishing, wow. I think, this coming week if I was doing fresh water. Well, I appreciate you calling in and sharing with us. Um, I want to... Uh, I want to say a big, big thank you because it was a kind of a last-minute thing. I was running crazy trying to figure out who we're going to get. And when I get you on, of course, you always give us a lot of information, which, again, you did this morning. I'm so grateful for it. And uh, uh, the thing with the uh, – was it what did you call it? Pips Beach? Is that whatever? Where you go snorkeling? Phipps. 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 P-H-I-P-P-S. Phipps. I didn't yeah. even know there was anything like that around here. <clears throat> I'm going to take my grandkids <clears throat> over there. <laughs> <laughs> and that's, let them do some that's, that's an ideal spot for it, yeah. Yeah, wow. I appreciate that, my friend. Thank you for sharing with us. So safe travels. I know you're out of the state. You're going to be traveling around. Safe travels when you get home. Tight lines when you're out there fishing. Let me give Carolyn. <laughs> I haven't given an opportunity to say anything. <laughs> I'm sorry, Carolyn. <laughs> you know what? <laughs> I just figured I'd hang out with you guys, and uh, you know, eventually, I'm I'm looking up Phipps Beefs, I'm looking up Mississippi. I'm I, I'm, I no, I, I appreciate. It. There's so much information that you share with us, and and you know, I don't even think you told your your our listeners that you're actually a writer for Florida Sportsman. Oh well. yeah, we didn't even get to that. Geez, yeah, that's right. Yeah, I've been I've been doing that for about 20 years now with them. And so uh, they they and, can find you there as well. Yeah, yeah. Well, I I, I do appreciate you. Um, let me come on. I like your show, and, and you know, anytime. I like to talk to good people, so I'm, I'm at your service anytime I can be of help, and, it, and it's good for me, too, so thank well, you. It, it is an honor awesome, and a privilege, Brad. my friend. Let me give Carolyn an opportunity to say goodbye, and then we'll go to a break. Go ahead, Carolyn. Absolutely. Until next time, tight lines, and have fun fishing this weekend. Uh, thank you very much, Caroline. You, too. You're listening to the Fishing in Florida show. We'll be right back. When it comes to parenting, there are no perfect answers. But that's okay, because you don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. Teens in foster care will love you just the same. For more information on adoption, visit AdoptUSKids.org. A message from the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services, AdoptUSKids, and the Ad Council. Thinking of moving? Before you do anything else, call Diane Whitting. 
She provides a concierge service. Things like having your home or condo packed and shipped, even take care of your home repairs or upgrades. Diane has the expertise to get it done. As a seller, you will have constant contact. She will furnish you with bids on any services that might need completion. Air conditioning, plumbing, handyman, and even cleaning. Living up north and have a home to sell here in South Florida? Just give her the keys, address, and a signature. Your payment will be wired when the property is sold. That's right, Diane does it all. Thinking of buying? Diane has great listening skills. Tell her what you want, give her your budget, and like a genie, she will make your real estate wish come true. There's no regrets when you choose Diane Wittick. To reach Diane, call 561-247-5478. That's 561-247-5478. Do you need toner for your Epson, Hewlett Packer, Canon, Brother, Apple, or Sharp printers? Look no further than Laser Technologies. In business for over 20 years, they offer the lowest prices on toner on the web. They can also repair your laser printers and toners fast and easy. Call their expert staff today at 561-792-9600 or email us at service at laser-technologies.com for all your toner needs. All toner is shipped nationwide. Why wait? Get the lowest prices on toner. Call or email us today. Do you have an unusual pet? Did you know that the Rainforest Clinic in Loxahatchee specializes in exotic pets? They see pets that other vets don't. Parrots and chickens, ducks, geese, turtles, snakes, goats, pigs, lizards, and even monkeys. Are you a beekeeper? Dr. Club, the first of her kind in the area? Yes, she takes care of bees as well. Dr. Susan Club has decades of experience and known around the world for her reputation as a premier avian vet. Located at 3319 E-Road in Loxahatchee, just a short distance north of Okeechobee Road, you will find a modern clinic with in-house labs, which allow you to get your test answers quickly. You can find them online at www.susanclub.com. That's www.susanclubb.com. Or you can reach her at 561-795-4878. It's Dr. Susan Club. That's 561-795-4878. The Rainforest Clinic located in Loxahatchee. 561-795-4878. Want to give your pet the celebrity treatment? Have you heard of Holly Wolf Pet Grooming and Care in Royal Palm Beach? They're located just off State Road 7 and have been servicing the area for 14 years. Holly Wolf Pet Grooming and Care is the home of the Blueberry Facial, also specializing in tartar removal with eight years of assisting in dental procedures. Holly Wolf Pet Grooming and Care? They're more than just about dogs. They are the only experienced cat groomer in the area. They also cater to all breeds and sizes and open six days a week. Holly Wolf Pet Grooming and Care, located just north of the Super Walmart in Royal Palm Beach. You can find them at 250 Business Parkway. They specialize in shampoos with no extra charge. Flea and tick dips also available. Holly Wolf Pet Grooming and Care. You can give them a call at 561-793-9992. They also provide gift certificates for those looking for that special present. Holly Wolf Pet Grooming and Care. 561-793-9992. They're located in Royal Palm Beach. That number, 561-793-9992. Call for your appointment today. This station is now the ultimate power in the universe. We have ignition. Strap in. Five, five, four, four, three, three, two, one, one. All I grab my fishing pole and cast it in the water. I fish until dawn. Oh my, I caught a shark. I'm fishing it for it all. When the sun shines all day. From the Sunshine State, broadcasting from Palm Beach County, it's the Fishing in Florida Show, Sundays from 8 to 10 a.m. And now, here's your host, Riscala. All right, we are back, and it is the Fishing in Florida Show. And a big thank you to all of you who take the time to let us share with you on Sunday mornings. Several different ways you can find us. The easiest of all of those is to download our app. It's absolutely free. There's no spyware, no adware, no push notifications, just an easy way to listen to our network. If you're on the web, you can go to our website, fishinginfloridashow.com. If you're on Facebook, go to our uh, Facebook page, click on Contact Us. If you have the TuneIn app, go to Marina Rock Radio. A big thank you to Marina Rock. 
Uh, go to Marina Rock Radio on TuneIn, and you can find us there. Uh, so there's several different ways you can reach us, and we are grateful for every one of you that do that. This morning, I have Carolyn with me with Atlas Tracks. If you want to protect what you love to the max, Carolyn with Atlas Tracks is who you have to talk to. Welcome back, my dear. Thank you, Escala. And I can't believe we're almost done with the show today. <laughs> I'm waiting for the uh, for the Florida Salty Cowgirl to call in here. She should hear from her in just a moment. She's going to tell us a little bit about her her uh, travels. She said that she has spent, I, I can't remember in how many days, but she's put over 200 miles of, of, of uh, what am I trying to say, of, of under the water or, or on the water, 200 miles on the water in the last, I think in the last just a couple of days. Uh, so she had a lot of stuff she wanted to share with us. So hopefully we'll hear from her in just a moment. And the... Uh, and, uh- yeah, and I, I wanted to share, we were supposed to have Jim Ott on the phone uh, with us earlier, and uh, he's a local, uh, his family's legend, so he, he started fishing when he was, I think, six six weeks old, probably. Um, he had uh, whips on his dock, and whips basically hold your dock, your boat off of the dock, and somehow a whip broke with the wind last night, and his boat um, went underneath the dock, and now the tide's coming up, so oh, stuck underneath wow. the dock. Wow. He's trying to get it out, and right now it's high tide here in the Deerfield Beach uh, Lighthouse Point area. So I offered to go give him a hand. He said they can probably get it out without sinking. So that's kind of what's going on for him. So he apologizes. He'll be on next week. Well, we had the salt, Florida Salty Cowgirl, and now we don't have the Florida Salty. <laughs> she was on, and then she was gone. <laughs> Maybe she's having a hard time, and she was call, uh, she'll call back in in a moment here. Well, I wish him well. Yeah. Um, I, the whip thing that you're talking about, I can see that in my mind. It looks almost like a giant fishing rod, right? It kind of holds your boat in place. It's, it's bent yeah, over it's like a fishing like rod. A, yeah, think of it as like a big, long pole bolting pole. Yeah. And what they yeah. do is they mount it to the dock and then um, stick it straight out to the water. And on that is a rope, and that kind of um, ties to the boat. So when you get off your boat, the, the spring of this long pole right. takes the boat off the dock. Yep. Um, yep. And uh, it's a great way to keep it from, from banging across the, the dock. So, for example, our boat, we really can't leave it in the water because we're in a wake zone. And if we tie it up, then it always bounces against the dock and, yeah. and um, pulls Beat off and ruins the rubber rub rail. Yeah. Right. So what I, what I came up with, Rascal, is I got some bungee cord rope and put it on some of the outer pilings. So what we do is, we don't need the whips. We just tie the boat to the bungee cord rope, like a water ski rope, wow. and uh, it pulls it off the dock itself. And that was a $6 investment. So it works pretty well. Wow. Clever, clever. Well, I think we have her back. And uh, who, who who I'm talking about is the Florida Salty Cowgirl. I think that's her. Hello, my dear. Good morning. Yeah. You know, it's kind of funny. Uh, down here in the Keys, we have this new house that's built to perfect hurricane codes but it's built like a storm shelter. So I have terrible phone reception inside of it. <laughs> oh, so you, you know uh, what she's talking about when she's talking about the whips on the, on the docks to keep the boat out? Absolutely, yes. And that's a wonderful, wonderful fix, like Carolyn was saying. It's inexpensive, it's easy to do, and definitely, definitely keeps that bo- boat from rubbing up against the dock. So I was sharing, before you came on, I was sharing with uh, Carolyn how you were telling me you did like 200 miles over the oh water. My yeah, we um, we had some friends, in t- or not, I'm sorry, we had some family in town this week, and uh, they really wanted to catch some fish. Uh, it was my guy's brother and his son, and they hadn't done any fishing down here in the Keys in quite a long time. And as you guys know from last Sunday, we were out on the water when I was doing the show. So we had already spent Sunday almost all day on the water. And Monday we took the day off and had family arrive in town. And Tuesday we went out and did another whole day. And, you know, everybody always talks about the good times fishing. But last Tuesday, for the first time in my memory, really, we got 100% completely skunked. Hmm. And I mean... <laughs> and uh, yeah, that's a very discouraging thing to happen. And uh, of course, our family in town, they, they really, really, really wanted to catch fish. So there was a lot of frustration there. So we turn around and go right back out Wednesday morning. 
And uh, the guys have the bright idea to go the whole length of the keys to hunt for fish. Oh my and that's wonderful. I'm always in, except for the seas were rough. And as we all know, it will beat you up a little oh, bit. And, uh, a little yeah, bit? <laughs> yeah, I know, right? <laughs> we ran for about an hour and a half to go to the first spot we wanted to go to. Oh, and uh, in rough seas, and it was definitely an adventure. They took me on a wild ride. Uh, it, it was interesting. And we spent 15 hours on the water on Tuesday. Oh, my uh, gosh. Yes, ran a very, very long way. Uh, finally picked up a few small mahi and and a nice little load of tuna. The blackfin tuna bite just seems to never, ever stop down here. And uh, good eating, fun to catch. Uh, we did a little bit of jigging at the hump, got a few little amberjack, uh, and we've been bringing the boat back and forth uh, between Tabernacle Creek, and it's kind of a long story. There's with just the two of us, it's uh, it's difficult. We don't want one of us to run that far, so we'll leave a vehicle down there. So on day three of fishing, uh, <laughs> my my vehicle was already left down in Tabernacle, so we took the boat all the way from Big Pine all the way down to Tabernacle, and we had an okay day of fishing on on Wednesday. So come Thursday. I was like, okay, I'm out. And I drove them all the way back down to Tavernier to get on the boat to bring it back. And that way, at least we had the boat back here. We had all of our cars back here. But of course, that day with me not on the boat, they had a wonderful day. They caught, <laughs> I think, six mahi. Uh, I kept teasing that maybe I had cursed them, you know. Uh, they caught, I think, six mahi and a really nice load of black and tuna. And uh, they, of course, finally, the, the family in town that are men are, are very, very happy. Now they got a load of fish to take home. They've been reeling in fish all day long. Uh, and what's really strange is they found a really neat little weed line somewhere offshore. And uh, as they were trolling it, little tiny amberjack, and I'm talking like little 10-inch, 12-inch amberjack, were just hitting the trolling lines like crazy. Like wow. they must have reeled in 20 of them. Wow. And now, granted, that's fine for a little bit, but then it becomes very, very annoying. It's like, ugh, let's get out of these darn amberjack, you know? And they were little tiny ones. So uh, really interesting few days of fishing. Like it just kept getting better and better and better every day for them. And uh, like I said, after that... The, after a 100-mile run with, or a 100-plus mile run probably, Carolyn can tell me from the Atlas tracks, but uh, <laughs> yeah, it, I was out an hour and a half. I carried my puppy with me on the boat. Me and her both looked at each other and said, oh, goodness, no, we're not doing this another day. <laughs> 15 hours. But, yeah, it's oh, a long goodness. time. A 15-hour day on the water is a very, very long time, especially for a small haul, you know, when you have a couple little mahi and and a, a, a little box of tuna that's decent, but you know, you'd really like to do better. Um, so it, it just goes to show you that even, even all of us, no matter how good we think we are, or, you know, how skilled we think we are, or how much we think we know the waters, it is absolutely possible to still get skunk. And I always say that's why they call it fishing and not catching. <laughs> <laughs> good point. Good point. Yeah. Well, you know, it's. It's so funny because earlier when you uh, you hadn't called in yet, we were talking about that too, and, and the pain I feel when I dump live goggle eyes back in the inlet. Uh, oh. When, yeah, you know that pain. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. Especially when they're like what seven or eight dollars a piece. Yeah, what she was saying is yeah. they're like a hundred bucks a dozen or something like that. It's crazy. Yeah, I think the goggle eyes last time I checked on here were like seven or eight dollars a piece, guys, for wow. bait fish. Think about wow. that. That's crazy yeah, that makes them and, around 100 bucks a, a dozen yep and that's why even like your, some of your most of your big charter captains uh they're out at four o'clock in the morning catching their own bait because one of my favorite live baits to use is pilchards and if you go to the bait shops here live pilchards if they have them are two dollars a piece wow. i can bottom fish on the reef for a grouper and i can run through a dozen in an hour that's an expensive hour. Wow. <laughs> so, yeah, live bait fish are very expensive. Your least expensive would be pinfish. And, um, you know, pinfish are good, but uh, pilchards are much better. And then for certain things like slow trolling, goggle eyes are the thing to have. And 7 or $8 a fish, that's wow. a lot of money for bait fish, guys. 
Wow. They Basically, can, yeah, uh, an business. Say it again, Carla. Yeah, now, I don't know about, I, I was going to say, I don't know about you, Angela, but you've been to my house, and um, yeah, as you know, it's a little bit brackish here, so we can't even save them in pins here because it's uh, too far from the inlet, but uh, that gets real expensive when you're taking, you know, five dozen baits out. Oh, my gosh. Absolutely, yeah. and that's the next thing I was going to say. Um, luckily, behind our house, it is not brackish. So the pinfish or the, uh, the uh, oh, goodness, my goodness, ah, uh, the no, pinfish or or the pilchards, uh, we actually have a, a bait uh, pen. And what we'll do is at the end of the day when we come in, if we have leftover live bait, we'll put them at the bait pen right at the seawall. And that way when you go out in a couple of days, your fish should be fine and healthy mm. and live. But goggle eyes are different. Goggle eyes do not keep. They don't like a bait pen. They won't, they, they'll die in a bait pen. They're much bigger. They're much more delicate in my opinion. Um, and yeah, they just won't keep in a bait pen at the seawall. So when you do buy goggle eyes, I mean, if you don't use them and, and they're still live when you're coming in, the only thing you can do is set them free in the inlet. <laughs> 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 and it's painful. You're just like jumping money overboard, you know? <laughs> but we all know fish is not the cheapest hobby in the world. <laughs> so is it is it blowing down there this morning? What's it, it like this it, morning? Yeah. It absolutely is. And I'm going to look at the update now. It's a little better than they had predicted, but we're still got 15, 16 knot winds today. Mm. And I know that when it said it was only like 10, 11 knot winds earlier in the week, I mean, we were looking at three foot seas. It was not comfortable waters to fish in. Uh, maybe it would lay down for about an hour in the afternoon and kick right back up. But yeah, the seas have not been perfect this week, guys. Um, not unfishable, but just not super comfortable. Uh, it makes for a very long day when the seeds are like that. But we're really troopers, and it's as long as it's not like today. Like today is not happening, you know. And tomorrow looks even uh, a little worse, in my opinion, down mm. here. Um, but yeah, those seeds make you feel like you've been beaten when you get in. <laughs> I mean, physically beaten. <laughs> so yeah, it, it's just definitely a long day, but. I thought it was really funny how every day kind of just progressed a little bit better and a little bit better and a little bit better. And uh, thanks to Carolyn and Atlas Tracks being on the boat the day that I did not go, but we got the boat and the truck and everything back home that day, which has finally happened after months of moving down here to Big Pine. It was kind of fun because the guys come in and uh, my guy is telling me where they went and and then we went here, and then we went there, and I'm just looking at him, and I said, well, I know where you were at. <laughs> I know where you were at all day long. <laughs> Do you sneak a you know, tracker on him? Is that where you that's did? A, that's a lot of fun doing that. And, uh, and uh, you know, I have to tell Angela, I'm so bummed out we weren't fishing this ladies' tournament today because uh, – but you, but you know, the pink ladies have some pretty cool stuff in the works that we're working on. But it was, uh, I was certainly hoping to get rally up the girls and uh, catch up and really get to the scales and have some good, good laughs and fun. So we'll, we'll see you soon. Absolutely. But you had terrible seeds up there, correct? Oh yeah, it's nasty. It's probably four to five. I'm looking at the live cam, six foot now. Uh, so two tournaments, two ladies tournaments were canceled. So. Um, you know, it's, uh, and, and they, where they all end up, Lake Boca, snorkeling, swimming, barbecuing. So they all, the got, ladies all got together anyways, but, um, certainly the tournament's rescheduled for this coming weekend. And, uh, I invited Angela up, but I think, uh, I'll just jump on someone's boat and represent the pink ladies. There you go. <laughs> so much going on these days with the pink ladies too, guys. So anybody who's not following us on social media, please do, because we have a lot of super cool stuff in the works. <laughs> so you can always pick Angela out because she's the one who's got this big ear to ear smile, especially if she's <laughs> holding a fish. You can tell that she's doing something that she's absolutely in love with. Uh, so I see a picture of you, one of the few that I've ever seen, where you're actually your back is to the camera and you're holding these two huge lobsters. <laughs> and I can, I don't have to see your face. I can tell there's a big smile, even though she's not looking at the camera. There's no question in my mind. She's smiling ear to ear because she got to see two lobsters in her hand. So I take it you you did some lobstering when all this stuff was going on. Absolutely, uh, they're still out there. They're you have to pick over them much more. Uh, I think the last time I was out there, I was with a, a lady neighbor of mine who I kind of lucked out on this move down to Big Pine because the first lady that I meet right across the canal from us, uh, she's an avid diver and she knows the waters around here really well. Sweet and. 
exploring new waters to me has been very, very exciting. Uh, I've been going around town getting tips and tricks from all the bait shops and all the old salts and anybody who I can bend their ear for a moment. And, uh, and then this particular lady has shown me some amazing snorkel and dive spots that I've just had so much fun exploring. And uh, I actually threw on a, I'm, I'm a, a, a scuba diver, I'm scuba dive certified. And I actually threw on my scuba tank for the first time in a couple of years. Uh, I don't know why I haven't been scuba diving, but it's just so much easier to free dive for me. Um, but we threw on tanks one day and went exploring one of the marine sanctuaries down here. And it is just gorgeous. So I'm really happy about that. But she and I, uh, she asked me to go out one day and she said, you know, what do you, what do you want to do? Do you want to go diving? Do you want to go snorkeling? Do you want to go hunt some lobster? Well, of course I want to go hunt some lobster. And uh, she made a formidable partner, which was really, really fun uh, when you get a couple girls out there. And it's fun to leave the guys on the dock. And the guys do not think we're going to come back with lobster. They just, you know, eh, yeah, let them think that they, you know, let them go do their thing. And so uh, we went out there and we chased lobster in very shallow water. I mean, we were in anywhere from five foot to 10 foot of water. Um, When we were in five foot of water, we could stand up and talk to each other and and, and discuss how we were going to double team this little spot of lobster, you know, but I bet you we caught 20 lobster that day wow. and everybody knows it's a six per person limit, but uh, most of them were undersized. So they've been picked over pretty well at this point. They're still out there, mm-hmm. but they definitely have been picked over and underwater. Everything looks bigger. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> So crazy me would chase one for quite a while because I think it looks like a monster and then you get it in your hand and you're like, oh my goodness, that's really small. <laughs> it's, that and everybody, is fun. Oh yeah. And, and everybody please abide by all of your right rules and regulations because you never ever want to have uh, over your limit fish on your boat, undersized fish on your boat, undersized lobster on your boat. Mm. Uh, fishing yeah. game is out there. They're the eye in the sky. They will get you. So uh, definitely don't be pulling, you know, undersized fish or too many fish or lobster on your boat. But uh, we're out there and you have to have a measuring stick on you when you're in the water lobstering. That's one of our laws down here. And uh, yeah, they looked like a monster and I'd chase it and chase it and chase it and finally get it in my hand and or in my net. And, uh, and I'm like, my goodness, this thing's an infant. <laughs> <laughs> but we did come back with a nice little haul of lobster and wow. uh and was very, very, very happy about it. And absolutely, my back made me to the camera because I was trying to show my really, really cool ladies jersey that I was, uh, you know, representing the pink ladies out there chasing lobster on the bottom. But uh, we came back with a nice little haul of lobster. And the best thing uh, is for a couple of us ladies to go out there with our guys, you know, poo-pooing us. Yeah, 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 let them go chase lobster. <laughs> They're not going to come back with anything. And next thing you know, the men are waiting on the docks for us. And we were ear to ear smiles. We had the best time. And uh, my neighbor was not a very proficient lobster. She had just sort of dabbled with it and had a little fun with it. And uh, we were very, very elated the whole way back. And she fessed up and said, this is the best day of actually catching lobster I've ever had with you. Awesome. And I'm like, that's, that's <laughs> perfect. I, I'm always happy to share those new first experiences with people and wow. uh, wonderful lobster cool. dinners that But yeah, they're still out there. Our waters are starting to cool down just a hair, but lobster season goes through May 1st. So until the water gets unbearably cold for me, I definitely will still be out there chasing them. Uh, That's not even like a hard day of fishing. That's just pleasure swimming for me. It's just kind of fun. It's like playing a game. And and I have to tell you guys, the first time I ever went lobstering, right, I put on my little pink flippers and I I put my tank on and I go. And this is something, this similar to the instructions I got. So we're in Fort Lauderdale. He goes, we're going to jump in. We're going to look for three oil pipelines laying on the bottom. Then we're going to look for a mushroom. No, we're going to look for a, a, a gray angelfish. We're going to hit it on the head with a stick. We're going to follow it back to the mushroom rock. We're going to reach under the mushroom rock, and we're going to, like, pull the lobster out. And I'm like, what? <laughs> <laughs> we have to do That's all of awesome. that? <laughs> I, I jumped awesome. in the water. Jumped in the water. I forgot everything he told me. I'm like, I don't know what to do. <laughs> I made a mistake. I made the mistake of grabbing one of them, and I thought it was the biggest cockroach. I threw it back up in the water. I'm like, 
And I'm like, no. It started flipping its tail, and I and I ended up with a big blister on my foot and a scar to show for it. <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh. And by the way, they do kind of look like the biggest cockroaches in the world, you guys. Uh, oh. Down here, our nickname for them is bugs. So we talk about going to chase bugs or. Uh, I think I put a post that I said I'm still bugging out with my neighbor. Um, <laughs> we definitely call them bugs. And for anybody who, uh, you know, looks at our pictures of our Florida lobster and they say, well, those aren't lobster because they don't have claws. Our lobster absolutely do not have claws. And if you want to get, even though we call them Florida spiny lobster, uh, if you want to get technical, they are Florida crawfish. Um, they're just the biggest crawfish that anybody in Louisiana can ever imagine. Uh, <laughs> But and they taste like lobster, but they definitely um technically they are crawfish. And with those big long tentacles or I always say tentacles, with the big long antennas that they have, uh, they definitely look like big cockroaches. Uh they're interesting <laughs> looking. I never thought of them like that. I don't think I'll ever enjoy lobster again. <laughs> oh no. You know, Riscala, when you grab the first one uh, you ever grab with a glove on and yeah. it starts trying to do its backward swim with its tail, yeah. it, it 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 keeps and you have to try not to panic and choke on the water because you're not expecting that as a as a very first time you grab one because uh, they want to get the heck away from you. You're and, kidding. Uh, I just remember, you know, all the instructions. I could barely get to my you know my local store and remember three items on the grocery list. I didn't know I was going to have to go underwater and find a gold, uh, find a fish, hit it on the head, follow it back to its home, and you know I didn't know I was doing all that. <laughs> oh my gosh! And that's that's another interesting little lobster fact. Uh, anybody who fishes with shrimp knows that the shrimp you know go backwards. Yep. Uh, they do not propel their bodies forward. They definitely propel their bodies backwards, and that's how they move. And uh, Carolyn's absolutely correct. Uh, we use what we call tickle sticks to reach down in the holes that they're in because they're always going to be in holes. They're never just sitting out in the open. You reach down with a little tickle stick and you kind of like coax them out of the hole. But a lot of times if they're in a little coral head that's got a lot of holes, they will shoot backwards out of another hole in this little coral head. And that's kind of when it comes into play to have a very viable uh, lobstering partner because we kind of inspect where we see these tentacles sticking out of this hole, and we'll inspect if there's other little holes, little swish cheesy holes in the rock or the, the coral head that they're in. And then if you have a partner where you reach in with your tickle stick and you run it out one of the other holes, if you have a partner waiting with their neck side, that's when you really start scoring. So that's why I say my neighbor and I, we were formidable lobstering partners. We were teaming up on them very, very well. And uh, we'd find a little hole that we could see two or three that were obviously underneath there. And we were snorkeling, you know, let's say 50 yards apart. But we'd call to each other and say, hey, come over here and help me uh, double team this hole. Because once I stick my stick up in there, they're going to shoot out everywhere. Oh, wow. <laughs> it becomes a little game. It's definitely a little hunt and chase game. And uh, when you're free diving, like Carolyn said, sometimes you, you just it's a bit exhausting because you're running out of breath depending on what kind of depth you're in. But I'm the kind of gal that I swim down there, Carolyn, and take a gloved hand and hang on to the top of the hole they're on, and I'll stick my head right in there to see what's in there. <laughs> and you're just hoping that a foray eel or something doesn't pop out at you. But, uh, yeah, I'm I'm the crazy one that will actually stick my hand up in the hole. If there's not another oh. hole and the lobster backs up into it and it won't come out. Not me. I, I, won't be doing, I wouldn't be doing a, here's that. Here's the funny the funny vision I have now is you holding on to a coral head, and of course bodies are buoyant, so now your feet are starting to float toward the surface, and you're, you're face down, down. In, in the hole, <laughs> holding your boat, holding your breath, and hoping you don't get water up your nose, um, reaching arms depth underneath the coral head for one lobster way in the back. <laughs> and that's exactly what it looks like, and you can laugh all day long, because that's exactly what it looks like. Your body floats up, I'm hanging on to the edge of the hole, and then when I reach my arm back in there and pull it out, and it's a it's a tiny little undersized lobster, that's a little bit disappointing. <laughs> <laughs> You're just praying and hoping that nothing else is up in that hole. Uh, mm, no crazy. more eels, no crabs. Yeah. Uh, there's a couple really Especially neat little crabs. holes Stone that you could crabs. look into, Ugh. and you could see movement. But when you inspected it further, the 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 antenna are the one thing that give away the lobster no matter what. The antenna are much longer than the entire length of the rest of their bodies. So you're literally down there looking around for antenna sticking out of holes. 
but I'd see movement inside of a little hole, but no antenna. And I'd hover over it and I'd inspect it for a while. And upon looking further, it, it would be a stone crab. And oh my goodness, you reach your hand in that hole, you might have a pinky finger. No, 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 <laughs> no, no, yeah. no, 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 no. That's a bad idea. Bad, 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 bad. <laughs> You know, just got to be a little bit careful. I'm a, I'm a little bit aggressive with it, and I have some fun, and I don't have a whole lot of fear, but you do have to be careful because I'd really like my fingers to stay intact yeah, for a while you. longer. Yep. <laughs> thank you. And the yep. dogs are, are, are definitely spiny. Um, once you get them on deck, you start playing with them with bare hands, they will get you. They'll tear you up. And, uh, oh, yeah. No, they don't have any other kind of defense but that hard shell with all the little spines on them. And uh, I definitely have gotten, you know – bitten by those spines so to speak and uh it, it doesn't feel good it's not nice mm. <laughs> but what a fun sport i mean to get out there and have a healthy day of swimming and diving and exploring the waters and hunting for these little things and uh in the event that you do catch a nice little batch like my neighbor and i did um you come in you have a fabulous dinner once you pull that tail off you would never know the difference between that and a in a northern style um, uh, lobster i'm not even sure what you call the northern lobsters help me out guys North, northern Maine lobsters, lobsters. Maine. there you go oh, Maine. Yeah. Maine Maine lobsters. Lobsters. Yeah. So that sounds good but yeah. uh yeah once you pull the tail off you'd never really know except for it's quite a bit smaller um they definitely definitely are, are some of the best eating down here so like I said, until the water gets cold enough where I don't want to dive because I'm a Florida girl and I'm spoiled with our bath temperature water, uh, I'll definitely be out there chasing them. Even if they're getting smaller and getting a little more scarce, it's uh, it's fun to come in with a few and have a nice dinner. It's a very accomplishing feeling. Not as easy as just dragging lines in the water. You're actually down there hunting, like really hunting. Working for it. And you know, really we, working for it. Yeah, Angela, I have a friend, the friend that um, took me diving for the first time. When he we does really well, he'll come back, he'll put one lobster tail in, in a red Solo Dixie cup, fill it with salt water, and he freezes them in his freezer like that. So when you go in his freezer, all you see is a little <laughs> end of the tail up there. You grab a cup. You, you, you can throw that, that uh, uh, right into a boiling pan and melt the ice around it, which is still going to be fresh as can be with no freezer burn. I'm like, that's a brilliant idea. Wow. And you eat lobster can... nachos for days. I've never even heard of that. That's amazing. That's a I, great yeah. idea. It's such a good idea. I've, I've heard of freezing fish in water, keeping from getting uh, freezer burn. Um, friends of mine did that years ago. I wanted to ask you, um, a Angela, now that you've been down at the bottom, so to speak, and you've looked around the reefs and so so forth, what is the what do you think the health of the reefs look like for you? You know, I'm going to use Lou Key as a as an example. It's a it's a very very popular dive spot down here. I had never uh, had no knowledge of it previous to moving down here. Um, so the day that my neighbor did say, "Let's throw on some tanks and let's go dive Lou Key," we had actually the week prior. We had done some snorkeling on it, and the water clarity wasn't really good. The visibility was lacking that day, but you could still see it was just an amazing, beautiful reef. I mean, just the coral structure is magnificent, and uh, it, it, it's, it's beautiful, and it's a very, very big area to boot. So when she said you wanted to throw some tanks on, I was absolutely all for it. And it's not a bad dive. It's a very easy dive for beginners because it's only, you know, 30, 40 foot deep, and some of the coral will come up like 20 foot, and, uh, and then you've got big valleys and, and big sand, you know, valleys and, and dips that run through the whole thing, and it's just magnificent. But I've read some really interesting things about it. There are about 100 different types of coral out there, and you can obviously see the difference in the different, you know, species of coral. But this is something that really impressed me. On Lou Key, there are tags from that Coral Reef Restoration Foundation, which I think we had one of my girlfriends on talking about it one day, mm -hmm. you know, a while back. But there are tags all over the coral. And if you're down there with a camera, they want you to take pictures of these tags and report back the health of this, of this coral. And I think that that's a magnificent thing. Uh, if you actually care about the coral and you really want these reefs to stay alive for a long time, for generations to come, uh, you know, giving the feedback to these companies or these uh, institutions, I should say, that, uh, that are taking care of the coral and are actually grafting it and trying to maintain the health of the coral. It's a beautiful program. 
And these tags were all over the coral down there. And it looked healthy. It looked vibrant. The fish were absolutely everywhere. In fact, uh, I, I have a thing for the parrotfish because they're so bright and they're so beautiful. I saw some of the biggest parrotfish I have ever seen in my life. Um, there were some blue parrotfish down there that are just gigantic. And, I mean, the biggest things you've ever seen. I, I couldn't imagine that they ever even caught that big. And if you know anything about the parrotfish, they actually eat things off of the coral. They have little beak-type mouths and yeah. teeth. Yeah. And while you're down there, sound travels under the water seven times faster than it does above the water. So you can hear every little thing down there. And you can actually hear these parrotfish, like, chewing on the coral, whatever it is that they eat off of it. They're supposed to keep the reef nice and healthy. But you can hear them picking out the coral, and it's just the coolest experience. Um, the fish down there are just everywhere. Every kind of species of, of tropical fish you can imagine. Um, I've made jokes that there's more grunts down here than I ever imagined in my entire <laughs> life. Uh, of course, you cannot fish in these marine sanctuaries. That would be highly, highly illegal, guys. So keep that in mind. Do your research and know your waters before you go, you know, harvesting marine life, but um, I mean, just angelfish the size of, of two dinner plates, just wow. gorgeous, giant wow. schools. Um, of course, I had a GoPro around my wrist with a full SD card, so I got no video. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> it always no. like that. But yes, the coral looks very, very happy and very healthy, and, uh, and it's, it's just it looks extremely prolific. Um, from what I hear, it's been growing and it's been improving in quality. Um, it, it's just beautiful. Uh, so goodness. many. Neat, uh, uh, I'm trying to think of how what kind of word to use. It's got caverns and holes in it where you can look down through and see through to the other side. And wow. uh, it, the the shapes and the designs and the landscape of it is just out of this world. And uh, I, I just, I absolutely love it. I can't wait to go back there and do more exploring because it's a giant area. And uh, yeah, it, it, it looks healthy as can be to me. I mean, I'm very happy. And like I said, we mm. did, uh, my part, my diving partner did have her underwater camera. And uh, we absolutely took pictures of these tags that are on the coral and sent them back with reports of how the coral looked and how it was growing and, that's and good news. you know what, what other types of coral were growing on it and i think that that's a wonderful good program news. to help these coral restoration groups and make sure that you know they don't have to have divers out there every day because there are tourists and locals diving it every day yep. so they get back without having to actually go out there under the water and i think it's just wonderful wow. i had never seen it before to be honest with you wow well, we are yeah. rapidly, rapidly running out of time, which is, which is the fastest two hours of my life. <laughs> it's Sunday morning. And uh, before we do that, I want to, uh, I know that uh, people may not know, in case you don't, uh, Angelia is a uh, professional captain. And she can, if you want to, I like to say about Angelia, if you want to give uh, fishing in the Keys of World, you got to talk to the Florida Salty Cowgirl. You can find her at various places. Um, the phone number, if you want to give your phone number out, Angelia? It's, it's 813-610-0078. And guys, text me first because I really have a problem answering numbers I don't know. So give me a text and say you want to go fishing, and I'll call you right back. There you go. My dear, thank you. I wish you an awesome day. I appreciate you taking the time to share with us. It sounds like you had some really great time. 15 hours, I, that would have worn me out. I couldn't I couldn't handle it. <laughs> Uh, but thank you for taking the time to call in. And let me give Carolyn an opportunity to say goodbye to you as well. Sure. And the other place to find Angela anytime is my house. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Carolyn, thank you for being co-host this morning. I appreciate you sharing with me and uh, taking the time. And, and you know, just uh, the fastest two hours, i got to tell you, it's the fastest two hours that we go through here uh, in my life. Thank you both. Greatly appreciate it. We'll be back in a week. Thank you, listeners. And uh, here we go. I'll see you on Friday. Come on, baby, let's go. Don't forget your bikini. I wake up in the morning.